Welcome. I've got a little example here to show you the difference between 4,500 feet of elevation and sea level on a turbocharged car. Um, we can basically look at the boost pressure difference and overall power difference that you're going to see, and as well as some tuning considerations. So let's just start out um, with some basics here that at sea level, measured in kilopascals, you can see here KPA is the measurement for manifold absolute pressure, 100 KPA is atmospheric pressure. That'd be roughly 14.7 PSI just in the atmosphere. So a naturally aspirated non-turbo car is seeing that much pressure going into the motor, and that's what it has to work with at sea level. However, uh, when you drive up into higher elevations or you're in different weather conditions, depending on what the higher low pressure changes are in the weather, that's going to change uh, slightly, or in my case, dramatically. I live at 4,500 feet of elevation, and so my manifold absolute pressure is a lot lower. You can see on this upper portion of my data log, if I go back to where I'm not in boost at all, you can see right there, my map pressure is 85. So at 4,500 feet of elevation, I'm already 15% I have 15% less air to work with um, for my naturally aspirated motor. And that's quite a dramatic change if you think about that in power, because as I scroll back up, you can see I have to have 2.2 PSI of boost to even equal what my car would have at sea level where it's at 100% um, or 100 kPa, which would be 100% of the atmosphere's pressure that it has on Earth. So it's kind of dramatic there. So uh, an, another example, say I'm making, let's just go up to the top of this pole. Say I'm making eight PSI boost. Um, well, actually for me to have eight PSI of boost, um, it's actually 2.2 PSI less. So if you go here, you know, that 15 kPa difference between 100 and 85, around 2.2 less, I'm starting with less um, than at sea level. So I, at sea level, only need to make 5.8 PSI of boost to make the same amount of power as I need to make 8 PSI at 4,500 feet of elevation. So no matter what, if I go down into sea level, the car is going to feel faster. It'll have more power overall. And, you know, to make a similar power number, I would need to run, um, I could run less boost pressure um, because I already have that extra um, atmospheric pressure. So, um, Another thing that you have to consider too is when you're tuning at higher elevation, I never see in a naturally aspirated car, I never see the 100 or even 90 kPa um, parts of the map. So this is something I dealt with when I first started tuning. Um, you know, it, you know, I would go out and tune and, and this part of the map would actually never really get touched. This was before I, I turbocharged the car because when it when it's turboed, you know, as you make boost, it'll touch those parts of the map in here. Um, but it was it it was pretty evident that you know we were down on atmospheric pressure. We I could never reach the parts of the map that I would see other people uh, tuning in as well. So that also leads to you know kind of scaling stuff and changing your ignition tables, things like that. You have to be uh, you have to be considerate of because we're not getting a hundred kPa. So where I put in my maximum like timing value, if this was the um, timing table, you know, my maximum timing it at a hundred kPa is actually going to be a little bit different because my 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 one hundred kPa is actually eighty five kPa at altitude. So I'm actually not worrying about these rows. I'm worried more about this row right in here, um, this eighty uh, kPa right around the border of ninety. So since I don't even use this, I can scale my map differently, especially in an NA application. In a turbocharged, you're going to use that part of the map. But if this was naturally aspirated, I wouldn't even be using 
you know, the 90 and 100 lines. So I could actually scale from 20 to 85. Um, I'd probably go to 90 just because depending on the weather conditions that we get here, some days uh, I have seen closer to, um, I have seen closer to 85 or high 80s, maybe 87 or 88 um, KPA for my atmospheric pressure, just depending on when the weather changes. Um, but that's one other thing you have to to look at when you're tuning at a different altitude. Uh, all those lucky people that live at lower altitudes um, don't have to worry about that. But this just is something to consider, kind of a cool example here to see the difference um, when you go up in altitude. So anyone who's at sea level and they're going to make a trip uh, somewhere where you have high elevations, this is what's going on when you're driving your car, um, why the turbo has to work harder to make the same amount of boost. Cause you actually have, you know, you have a reference where your turbo is going to always make, you know, whatever you regulate it at, maybe you want to make 14 pounds of boost. Your turbo is always targeting that 14 PSI. But since you're starting at a deficit, it actually has to make two and a half more PSI, at least at my altitude. So just wanted to share this little example here of some considerations to make when you're tuning at altitude and kind of a real life example of uh, why you're at a deficit um, with a with any internal combustion engine at higher altitude um, and why turbochargers are so awesome. Thank you.